Recently, I've been having troubles with my keyboard, and honestly, troubles might be an understatement. When it got so bad to the point that I had to press some characters like 40 times for them to actually register, just like every other sensible person would do, I decided to buy a new one. And that's when I realized the problem. Most of the mechanical keyboards on the market are targeted towards gamers. And what do gamers love? Gamers love that sweet mouse space so they could flick and do 360s all day long, whatever. The problem I have with this, however, is that because of that, keyboard manufacturers tend to shorten their keyboards. And how do you shorten the keyboard? Well, you cut off the numpad. And that's the elephant in the room. I love using numpads. I cannot stress this enough, whether it will be Blender navigation or doing something as trivial as using a calculator, there is simply no way I will just give up on using a numpad. And so after a long search for the market, I found one keyboard. Do you think it fixed my issue? No, it did not. It absolutely did not. It still is a TKL keyboard. And that's when it struck me. What if I were to buy the keyboard and then make a separate standalone numpad device so I could use it whenever I'm working and then move it away so I could game with, with the mouse space that I mentioned? I think I really like this idea because not only would I not give up on getting a numpad, also I could learn something in the process and I could use the mouse space for gaming as well as the numpad for productivity. I don't think I see any cons, so let's get to work. First, let's start with the layout sketch. Obviously, I want the default layout that you would usually find on a numpad, but then above the numpad, there's usually this big empty space that's reserved for the vendor's logo or maybe LEDs and, and other things. I would like to utilize that somehow because I don't want the numpad to be too short so it wouldn't look comically next to the keyboard, but I also don't want it too big. So in a perfect scenario, it would be roughly the same size. So how about we just populate it with some function keys and then we can add a volume knob right next to it. But now another empty space emerged and I was thinking about a couple of things I could use there. Uh, I even considered a screen at one point, but then I realized that most of the things that I've thought about are party tricks. I would not use it, they would be completely useless. I would maybe show them off like once or twice to my friends and that would be pretty much it. That's why I think I'll settle on just more function keys. Who knows, maybe I'll use them all one day. And now that's the layout, what about the rest? Maybe let's start with the top case. And so for the top case, I'm a huge fan of the closed case design that more premium keyboards offer. And so I'll go with that. And I guess that's pretty much it for the top case. It wasn't really a long process. And then we need to close it up somehow. But in order to close it up, we need to know what components go in. And that's when we have to consider the features I want in the numpad. So first, I want the cable to be detachable. And so I will add a USB-C port right here in the back. Also, I didn't mention it, but I want the numpad to be hand-wired. And it somewhat conflicts with the next feature, that is Perky RGB. But researching, I haven't really found a lot of hand-wired keyboards on the internet that would have Perky RGB, because it simply seems too, way too hard to do, or maybe people are too lazy. We're gonna figure it out. But so far, I think I have an idea how to do that. It might take some time, but it seems possible. We'll take care of it later. And then, as the brains of the numpad, I will use a Raspberry Pi Pico, which is a great microcontroller for such purposes. And the last thing we have to design is the bottom case. And for the bottom case, I decided to take some inspiration from the GMMK numpad, which I think will be quite easy to assemble. I also need to consider the fact that it's gonna be 3D printed, and so I need to optimize the parts for that. Also, just to bring in some originality, I will make the sides a bit more angled. Now, there is one concern I have with this design, that is, it might tip when pressing on the sides or maybe on top and the bottom, uh, so perhaps when, when pressing on the volume knob. But then if it doesn't really work, we can also reprint it and maybe check some other designs in the process. Now, let's put the sketch into CAD and looks Great, honestly, I would be really happy if it looked like that after the assembly process. And speaking of, I think it's time to print it out. Now, the first thing I printed were these two prototypes, which allowed me to check if all of the measurements were correct, if the switches actually did fit in the holes, 
and so on. And actually there, there were no major issues, I didn't think it would go so smooth, and so I just hopped into printing the numpad itself. And now that we have the parts printed, let me take you through the assembly process. And so first, we put in the switches, then we connect the switches with some wires and diodes. I'll not go into the details of why exactly we do that, but just know that diodes make a keyboard far more reliable. Then I will put some spacing parts in, the plastic sheet with LEDs that I soldered earlier, then let's put the USB-C connector in, the Raspberry Pi, and now let's do even more soldering. Now that everything is soldered, we can screw the bottom case in, maybe put some keycaps in because it seems pretty empty. Also I forgot to mention it, but I found a really random keyboard in my house that I decided to take the rubber legs out of. I took some measurements of them and then put the holes of those measurements in the bottom case, so that I could actually prevent the numpad from sliding around just like every other keyboard does. And now it honestly looks pretty great, it's rather heavy. Uh, but it still lacks something. Some of you might have noticed that there is no knob. And oh boy was it fun to make the knob. This part was far too long, so let me just tell you that there were a lot of iterations and some of them ended up in the trash. So I printed out a knob just a little smaller than the spot reserved for it and then covered it in hot glue so it resembles rubber. And after just a little sanding and maybe filling in a couple of gaps, it looks great. Now, it's on the numpad, as you can see, the numpad is pretty much finished uh, when we're talking about the assembly process, and technically it could be used, but it cannot. And you might ask, why? Well, let me plug it in. So as you can see, the LEDs do light up, but the thing is, the numpad just takes power from the USB. It doesn't really know what it's supposed to do. The numpad won't numpad if I don't tell it how to numpad. And that's where the firmware comes in. And what firmware is, is basically some code that runs on your keyboard that is responsible for communicating with your PC. That's pretty much all you need to know. And well, I could have used some ready open source solution like QMK or whatever there is on the market. I wanted to actually know what goes into my numpad. I wanted to learn something. Let me just tell you, it was roughly two weeks of no sleep. Well, there, there was sleep, I'm exaggerating, but you get the point. It was hell, pain, suffering, agony, but was it worth it? Yes, it was. It, it, well, it might not be that pleasant to work with. It's extremely satisfying and rewarding. So now that I have it working, technically I could already use it, but there is just one small issue. What exactly is the point of perky RGB if I can't set it, because uh, as of this point, I could only just rewrite the code and reflash the numpad. And now you might expect me to pull out some magical software that works with every device that's absolutely great for setting RGB. They might have even sponsored me, but no. That is the moment when I got carried away. And I mean like far, far away. Behold, software. Yes, that's right. I wrote an entire software for it. So maybe let me give you a quick tour. So obviously as of this point it only supports my numpad as it's the only peripheral that I've made. However it is modular, like really modular, so it wouldn't be an issue if I wanted to make another peripheral in the in the future. It's quite intuitive, or at least I think so. It supports the main feature it was made for, so switching the RGB. There, there is one main setting that influences the entire keyboard unless a certain key is set not to inherit. So maybe it has a different speed value, maybe it's set to go into another direction. It might even have another effect on, which allows me to create such cool effects as this one. And I don't think I've ever seen any manufacturer whatsoever use this kind of approach. It might be because it uses a lot of storage and so the device might degenerate a bit quicker if you change it often, but I don't, so it's not really my concern. When it comes to my favorite effects, well, it's this one that I called Ring Mode, which unfortunately is not available in my keyboard, so I think I'll just stick to my favorite set of static colors. And now I think it fits my setup pretty well. You can't really recognize that it was handmade at first, uh, which was my entire goal. Obviously there are some imperfections, like as you can see here, there is this seam, it like, doesn't fit that well as well in, as in CAD. That is because of some manufacturing problems I had. Basically my 3D printer did not track the Z positions correctly, and so it made all of the parts a bit taller than they were supposed to, but I don't think I will change it. It isn't that big of a problem, it simply doesn't look 
all that great when when turned upside down but it's not really upside down on a daily basis when i use it so i don't think it's gonna be worth it i will simply keep it as that besides it's my very first project of this kind of scope if you can call it a bigger scope and i'm still quite happy with it i'm really happy that it was one of the projects that actually did conclude that i got all the way to the end stick around to the channel if you want to see more projects because i know there are some upcoming it might take some time but they will and they will be equally or even more awesome than that. And so that was the story of how I built this beauty. The elegantly extravagant numpad. Thanks for watching. <laughs>